So thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith. I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And thank you so much for joining me for another Genome HQ Instagram Live here on our two year anniversary. Isn't that amazing? You know, I was doing Instagram Live three days a week then. Ooh, how did I do it? <laughs> uh, but it was wonderful. So again, you can go back and review all of our previous Instagram Live series, A to Z with Genome, and then we had Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. Uh, and then we began Magical Machine Mystery Tour, which we're still doing again every other week. And then Ask Janome HQ. Anyway, we can share the Janome love and get all that information out there. So we are back for finally Ask Janome HQ. It seems forever since I have done a Janome HQ Instagram live presentation. And this is where you can go on our Janome Canada social media and even our Janome HQ social media and ask us uh, questions of, oh, thank you. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. I love that, Joan. Uh, so yes, you can ask us questions. So today, ooh, what are we gonna talk about? So today on Janome HQ Instagram page, we had the question about, is there an adapter that we can use our low shank presser feet on our high shank Janome machine? So the answer is no. And here is why we do not want to do that. So I happen to be, oh yes, look at that fabulous Janome Continental M17. Yes, I have it home with me. <laughs> so we'll definitely be talking about that. Today is going to be a whole hodgepodge of questions. And you know, when we had our giveaway for Genome HQ, uh, 1500 followers, again, thank you everyone uh, who was uh, giving us your feedback, what you'd like to see more of. Uh, I'm compiling a list of everything and some of those questions and, um, you know, concerns, more information requests are going to be featured in the upcoming uh, Ask Genome HQ presentations. So when we talk about high shank and low shank, and is there an adapter you want to use your uh, low shank feet on your high shank machine? Or when I, we also get, can we use our seven millimeter feet on our nine millimeter machine? Or conversely, maybe you've got a five millimeter machine and now you've upgraded to a seven millimeter. Uh, or again, you've got a seven millimeter machine and then now you're upgrading maybe to the fabulous Continental M17. Can you use some of those presser feet? So the answer is no, you really shouldn't. Now in particularly, why? When I drop my presser foot here, now I have the fabulous PM precision marker uh, that is one of the new features of Continental M17. I have this on and I'm going to be talking about this in just a minute. Uh, but when you're determining if your machine is a high or a low shank, simply drop whatever presser foot you may have, drop the presser foot, and then you're going to measure up to this little screw. If it is about an inch to an inch and a quarter, it is a high shank. If you measure up and it's about half of an inch, it's a low shank. So particularly, we're talking about this is our foot holder. Some people call this an ankle because, you know, here is our presser foot. So if this is a foot, this is an ankle, but it's actually a foot holder. Now, isn't this cool on the Continental M17 here? It says 9H. So I believe this stands for 9, that it's a 9 millimeter, and H, that it's a high shank. So this way, if you do have a seven millimeter machine and a nine millimeter machine, you're not going to be messing up your foot holder. It'll definitely make a big difference. So I thought that's cool, Janome uh, now marked this one. So this is great. So when we talk about high shank and low shank, again, it really depends on the height of that screw. So here are two feet that look very similar. This one, this is the convertible free motion quilting foot and or specifically foot holder. And then there's various feet that attach. So here are two, again, they look very similar, don't they? They look very similar. But when we examine them very closely, we'll see here as this attaches to this screw that we would remove whatever foot 
uh, holder we have, we would remove the regular foot holder here and replace it with this is all, all in one. This is the actual foot holder and here is the foot. And these, uh, there's interchangeable feet here, uh, which is why it's convertible. <laughs> uh, so this we can tell is a high shank because when I drop my, oops, drop my foot and then lay this up next to it, you'll see how that foot holder there would go across like to attach with that screw. So I could use this high uh, shank uh, foot with my high shank machines. Uh, we don't want to use it with our fabulous auto lift machine here. We don't need to. Uh, but here is the low shank version of it. So if we put that Next, you'll see there's no way I'm going to be able to attach that. There is where the foot holder should be. That screw should be way up here is this screw. So I can't, you know, and if we put it up, like, look at that. That's, that's where it would be in line with that screw. And that's never going to work. So that's, that's not good. So it's definitely important to make sure you get, if you have a high shank machine, to get the high shank feet that are compatible. Specifically, your blister pack will be of great value to you. The nine millimeter machines. Now, this is the older version of the blister pack. Actually, the blister pack, um, uh, we've got a new, uh, graphics for it. So, uh, but they, they indicate here nine millimeters. So then we know, yes, we got a nine millimeter machine. And when we talk about millimeters, we're talking about here is our regular zigzag needle plate. We're talking about this width here. That's nine millimeters. Then if you have a seven millimeter machine, it'll be slightly smaller and a five millimeter, it'll be slightly smaller still. So that's what we're referring to as um, millimeters. So nine millimeters, very important. And then it even tells us a uh, seven millimeter high shank machines because again, this refers to the shank itself. So it could be nine millimeters and seven millimeter machines. So long as they're high shank, we can use this one. If we have a low shank machine, it'll say convertible free motion quilting foot set for low shank machines. And it looks like that. So again, we got to make sure that it's the shank that we're paying attention to in some cases, not the actual uh, width of that uh, needle plate, if it's a nine or seven. Um, now, specifically the question for Genome HQ, uh, they mentioned the ruffler foot, which looks like this, the ruffler attachment. Now in the Janome's awesome accessory countdown. Uh, I demoed this ruffler foot and our fabulous Celine has demoed it on the uh, Janome sewing machines uh, Facebook lives. That's Janome America's Facebook page. And you can see all of Celine's presentations. If you go to Janome sewing machines, Facebook and click the videos tab, and then you type in Celine Ross in the search box and all of Celine's videos will come up and all of Celine's presentations that I load as videos on the Janome HQ YouTube channel under the Facebook Live playlist. So you can see them there too. So both of us have demoed the ruffler attachment. Now here, it doesn't matter if the machine is a high shank or a low shank because the ruffler foot is a snap-on foot here. So this is where it will matter if it is a seven millimeter or a nine millimeter. Uh, so you can see there is where it would snap on. So we have different ruffler attachments, for example, nine millimeters, nine millimeter stitch width, that it's a snap on foot. We even have a ruffler attachment for those machines. Well, if you can see where it says AccuFeed models. So those that had the built in AccuFeed, like the 6600 and the 7700, there is a ruffler attachment for those specific machines as well. So again, very important to get the correct uh, foot and attachment for your machine. So because these feet are snap on, this is where we take our foot holder. Well, there's no way I'm going to get this snapped on to my foot holder here. So I know this is for a seven millimeter machine. Whereas this one for my nine millimeter. Oh yes, I'll have no problem at all. So we could, ooh, 
snap that on again no problem at all so it really depends again you know, what kind of uh, stitch width you have for various presser feet now particularly again we wouldn't really want to use our seven millimeter presser feet again we don't have an adapter uh, maybe from a third party manufacturer you may be able to find one but we really don't recommend that because then your feed dogs are not going to line up with your seven millimeter machine if you're now using that smaller more narrow foot on your wider feed dogs that's not really going to feed most optimally so uh, again we really don't recommend uh, trying to switch it out uh, luckily Janome presser feet are really quite um, reasonably priced uh, that you can if you have to buy the same presser feet if you have a seven millimeter and you want to upgrade to a nine millimeter and now you want those same decorative optional feet uh, you know they really aren't that uh, unreasonable you know to, to have to get new ones uh, but it's definitely worth it because then you know they're going to work properly the way that they should so that's very good to keep in mind uh, now also a question that we've had is about pre-wounds Janome does have pre-wound bobbins many times people oh no I can't use pre-wounds yes you can use Janome pre-wounds <laughs> they come in black and they come in white like that and the cool thing about these pre-wounds is they are on the Janome J bobbin and that's a question we get all the time about pre-wounds can I use them in my Janome machine well sure we always recommend Janome pre-wounds now so long as your other brand is uh, that same class 15 size then yes you can use that other brand of pre-wound in your Janome machine if the bobbin is uh, class 15 and we definitely want to stick to uh, plastic bobbins we don't want to use metal bobbins in our top loading machines here metal bobbins are fine for your front loading machines but your drop-in bobbins here we want to stick to plastic no metal and we want to avoid those cardboard uh, bobbins as well stick to a plastic bobbin uh, class 15. now Janome bobbin ooh also come in black and white you can get them 108 bobbins don't you love these so if you find the 12 that comes in the blister pack you're going through them too much look at all that isn't that gorgeous oh yes so you can get these in black and white they are 60 weight thread so a good average uh, thread uh, polyester but slightly finer you know thread is weird in that the higher the number the finer the thread so 60 weight so it is good to use for your embroidery machine I use these for embroidery all the time although I personally like the 90 weight Janome bobbin thread uh, best but then again polyester bobbin thread uh, 80 yards uh, per bobbin and these are 108 or then we have them in white and black in the 12 pack blister pack so these are great to use and again available from your Janome dealer very conveniently and if they don't have them in stock oh gee sorry about that <laughs> if they don't have them in stock they can always order uh, for you now yes when I mentioned Janome J bobbin well yes here is a little bit of bobbin thread left on and oh the big reveal when all of that bobbin thread pre-wound look there is our ooh can you see can you see that little J Janome J there so yes the Janome J bobbins are great because they have a little bit of rubber in them so they are great for especially high speed sewing and we're gonna stop quickly then we don't have to worry about that bobbin still spinning it stops on a dime so there isn't that birds nesting and backlash there now sometimes with the and it also keeps your machine a little quieter as well uh, by having that rubberized compound and you know when you drop them on the ground uh, they kind of bounce they don't instantly break even if you step on them so it also makes them a little stronger oh Nova so is so uh, Nova sewing is here hello hello now sometimes with your pre wounds uh, then yes because they are wound at the factory you're actually the advantage of pre wounds you can get more thread on the pre wound than you can if you just uh, were to wind it at home so sometimes you actually have to peel off a little bit of thread 
in order to get it in your machine. I uh, think no problem, it's only a little bit. But that thread, if you're worried, oh, that's a waste of thread, save it for some hand sewing. If you wanna sew on a button by hand or you're doing some basting, no problem. So it's only a little bit, but sometimes, I don't always have to do that, just sometimes there is maybe a little bit of extra thread, just take it off and then drop it in, no problem at all. So that is another question that we have often had. Now, specifically about this fabulous machine. Oh yes, I already have a Continental M7, but now I have a Continental M17. Can I use some of the same parts and pieces for it? Can I use some of the same pressure feeds and attachments? Well, yes, again, it's it's a same nine millimeter machine, high shank. So if you already have a Continental M7 or any, if you're trading up from a Memorycraft 15,000, any of your nine millimeter uh, feet or attachments will work with your new CM17. So things like, oh, we have the circular attachment for easy set models. So that is any of our machines that have this little, it, it's a drop in bobbin and any of them that have this little thread cutter here at the side, when we load our bobbin and then we wind it around, and then we can cut that bobbin thread here. So this is what we refer to as the easy set model. And again, a number of machines, you know, Skyline S9 and, uh, Oh, 6,700 and 15,000, you know, there's a lot of machines with that easy set uh, model. So any attachment, like your circular sewing attachment, will fit because we're just going to take the bobbin cover off. Now, same thing in the A to Z with Janome series, I demoed the circular attachment. And again, our fabulous Celine has also demonstrated it for Janome sewing machines. Facebook Live, so you can go back to review lots of Janome Life blog posts all about the circular attachment. So you can see more there. And I will be doing more demos as I um, go along. It's just the time is always so quick here. Uh, but then yes, it, it easily fits in. We take our bobbin cover off and then it fits in. There's a little screw that attaches there. And then we can affix our fabric down on that pin. How about this for the circular attachment? As we're all finally going to get outside, well, this can be a beautiful uh, placemat, you know, for your picnic table outside. Ready-made placemat, you just do the decoration. Or again, any stitch, decorative stitch in our machine, even when those we create, you see my name, Mike, I created with the Stitch Composer software that's created in a number of Janome machines, we can even use those stitches. So it's very simple that this little ruled guide moves and we spear it down like that and put our little top hat and then it literally stitches in a circle. It is really quite cool. And again, you can go back to Janome HQ uh, oh geez, <laughs> Janome HQ YouTube to watch that. Oh, I ended up spearing my fabric. There we go. And then again, this li literally just spins. So you can go back to review those other presentations. And again, I will be doing more uh, demos live. I just wanted to get through a lot of info today with all these little questions. Uh, so yes, that is the circular attachment for easy set. Yes, it'll fit, no problem. Now, of course, you know, don't feel left out if you don't have an easy set because there, there are actually three different uh, types of circular attachments or three different sizes. Uh, it all depends on your bobbin cover. So your, yes, it goes this way. <laughs> uh, so if you have a square bobbin cover, then there is one for you, or if you have a rectangular bobbin cover, uh, like the QDC machines, uh, then again, you've got one for you. Now there's more information again, all about the circular attachments and your parts numbers in the accessories guide on the Janome, uh, .ca website, Genome Canada in the accessories guide, or again, the Genome Life Blogs, many, many posts with, that give you the part numbers on all of these attachments. So you can get a circular attachment for almost all Genome machines. So that's good. Uh, yes, for the uh, easy set again, things like, oh yes, our quilt binder attachment, you know, same thing. It has the built-in bobbin 
cover. So you take out the bobbin cover and then you drop that in, screw it down to your needle plate, affix your binder. So if you, again, you've already got the binder attachment for your 6700 or your Memorycraft 15000, that yes, it's going to work on your Continental M17 as well. Any machine that's easy set. Now, speaking of quilt binder attachments, I'm so proud of myself because even though I've been incredibly busy, I finally finished my Jennifer Tryon's quilting event last year. <laughs> uh, I finally finished my quilt. This was the Lottie quilt that, again, I know a number of you participated also in the Jennifer Tryon event. Uh, Amanda did as well. So you saw uh, Jennifer and Amanda doing the lives and, you know, Amanda quilted her uh, quilt on the Quilt Maker Pro 20 at the Sewing and Learning Center. And then I bound my Lottie quilt. I just finished it, so I have to do a label, but I bound it with the quilt binder attachment. Now you can go uh, see the quilt binder attachment in action in the Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. I think it was uh, number four was the quilt binder attachment. Uh, and again, for easy set models in this case. And so here I did a serpentine stitch, kind of like a, a very soft zigzag there, simple, fast, easy. It was so wonderful. So I finished my Jennifer Tryon Lottie quilt, so I'm so excited for that. So yes, you could use your easy set attachments here. Oops, easy set attachments here on your CM17. Now, if you have a Continental M7 and people wonder, oh, well, because the CM17 is an embroidery machine, as well as a sewing machine, it comes with the two bobbin holders. The regular bobbin holder, Janome is now getting very wise, even more wise than usual. You'll see, ooh, it says maybe you'll see 10 grams. So this is the regular bobbin holder at 10 grams, set for using Janome thread. <laughs> but when I, ooh, this is another feature uh, borrowed from Continental M7. We lock our machine, one touch needle play. Oh, look at that. It just rises up all on its own. So simple. When I remove this bobbin holder, because I was just doing some embroidery, you'll maybe see 20 grams right there. So we know this one is a higher tension bobbin holder. So it's pulling those bobbin or that needle thread to the bottom. Now, normally our other bobbin holders, we call it the yellow dot bobbin holder is the high tension uh, bobbin holder. But here, because Continental M17 and Continental M7 are very unique machines in that they not only have this magnetic needle plate, but there is an optic bobbin sensor that is through here. So it gives us an alert when our bobbin thread is running low. So we do not want to use uh, another kind of bobbin holder in this machine. In fact, we can't. The, the needle plate will not sit in place if we have another bobbin holder in place. So it's very specific to the Continental M17. So instead of the yellow dot or the yellow triangle, they made the high tension bobbin holder for Continental M17 with a little white dot. The regular bobbin holder has a kind of yellowy orangey dot. And again, it's marked with 10 grams. So then we know, yes, this is the regular one. This one is the high tension one. And these are only specific for uh, Continental M17. They have a little, ooh, they have a little hole right here for that optic sensor to come through to read the bobbin. That's why as well, we want to use bobbins that are uh, plastic. Now it's okay to use the red bobbins and the pink bobbins, the blue bobbins. It's okay to use colored bobbins, Janome colored bobbins, in your Continental M7 and your Continental M17 because those bobbins are still, uh, you know, clear in that uh, the, the optic sensor in the bobbin area can still read 
through that bobbin. If we were to use a metal bobbin or a cardboard bobbin, that sensor wouldn't be able to go through that plastic. So that's why, uh, or that through that bobbin. So that's why we want to use plastic bobbins. And specifically, we might as well, we know Janome bobbins work. They're, they're again with the little J on it with that rubberized compound. So we might as well just use them. Like we, we know they work beautifully. So I say just keep things simple. You can get tons of them from your Janome dealer. And you know, many of our Janome dealers do have online stores now too. So you don't even have to physically go to their stores. They will also ship to you. Now, if you had a Continental M7 and you already got the Continental M7, specifically the blister pack for Continental M7. If you got the low tension bobbin holder, which we typically refer to as the blue dot bobbin holder, there's the little blue tick mark to it. This is the low tension bobbin holder, so the needle threads won't get pulled to the backside the way that they will uh, with the high tension bobbin holder. So we would use this low tension bobbin holder when we want to do that uh, hand look quilt stitch or when we're doing uh, free motion quilting or ruler quilting. So that way we don't have to worry about the needle threads being pulled to the back side. So again, if you already had a Continental M7 and now you're trading up for a Continental M17, if you already have this low tension bobbin holder for Continental M7, yes, you can use it with your Continental Continental M17 because it's got that same optic bobbin uh, sensor, that same magnetic needle plate, so no problem. If you're upgrading from a 15,000, let's say, or Skyline S9 to a Continental M17, you cannot use your uh, free motion quilting, your low tension bobbin holder, again the little blue dot, you can't use your regular uh, blue dot bobbin holder or regular yellow dot bobbin holder in the Continental M7 or Continental M17. Uh, you'll see it just won't work at all, uh, but you'll see then you can really tell it apart. Oh look, there's no, there's no hole. There was that extra little hole you can tell. See, there's the, ooh, there's the extra little hole there in the Continental M7 bobbins. There is no little extra hole in this one, so this one will not work. So there is really important, there's so many different, in fact, there's a blue dot bobbin holder. They look very similar, but this one has that little metal hook on it. This is for machines that have the automatic scissor button, uh, like again, the 15,000, like Skyline S9. Whereas this is for machines that do not have that automatic scissor button. So again, it really depends which machine you have. So it's really important to look at your blister packs and again, double check with your Janome dealer uh, just in case. So I'll just put in my bobbin holder, doesn't matter which one, and close this up. So that's very important. Uh, then I wanted to, yes, this PM precision marker Ooh, I've got to move back because this giant embroidery hoop, 11 inches by 18.1, the largest in the industry. Look at that. I was doing some embroidering last night. Clip this into our embroidery carriage so I can demo. Many people have asked with this precision marker. It attaches to the back of the machine and again attaches to the little screw here on our presser bar and it's very much like our embroidery foot. Our regular embroidery foot is the P foot but this is the PM. This is the precision marker foot and what that is when we affix it to the machine Again, our machine, uh, this is again Continental M17, the brand new machine. Again, I love machines that help us. So that tells me, oh, you've got the PM, the precision marker attached, saying PM, there's the foot, and there's that little bullseye, kind of that little crosshairs marker, which is right here. So when I click this button, which is now highlighted so it's engaged, 
So ooh, I hope you'll be able to see. Sometimes it's hard to see on camera. I was hoping on black it would show, but I see sometimes it's hard. Oh, I wonder if I turn out my light. Oh, no. Oh, maybe you can see a little bit. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard to see. There is a laser light right there on the fabric. So this precision marker, the laser light is actually right up. Oh, there. Can you see on my finger? There you can see it. Though, So there is a laser light right there that shines down on your fabric. So I know exactly where the needle placement is going to be. So if you are aligning a design, realigning a design, Oh, we can even use this thumb wheel, a new feature in Continental M17, again, to hover our needle over. Oh, is that going to line up precisely? So we can double check there. On our middle LCD screen, one of the other new features of the Continental M17, we can adjust not only the brightness of the laser, but we can also adjust the uh, pinpoint of the laser. Sometimes if it's uh, not exactly where we want it to be, or let's say we're doing a napped fabric like velvet, and you know, sometimes that laser light isn't going to lay across the, the nap uh, quite, you know, uh, flat. So we can adjust that laser position here on this middle LCD screen. So we can get that laser light exactly where we want it to line up our design perfectly. Uh, also, something we can do on Continental M17, we can adjust the embroidery foot height. And we also have a fabulous stylist uh, here on Continental M17 too. Uh, so yes, you can adjust the, or we could even do that too. So, so many different ways. So we can adjust the presser foot height that's just going to hover over our embroidery. So again, if you've got a napped fabric or if you're um, adding some dimension, some applique, uh, then we can adjust that presser foot uh, height there. Now, specifically why I'm showing this, not only to talk about those couple of features, but a couple of times people have asked, uh, oh, can I use this precision marker for embroidery? Can I use it for regular sewing? And I have to clear my deck <laughs> because uh, can I use it for regular sewing? And then when we start embroidering, the another question people have asked, uh, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go and embroider this. Once you start embroidering, then uh, the laser light is going to automatically disengage. So it's only engaged to help you with your embroidery placement. Once you hit go, you know, with your stop start button, and once you hit start, that laser light is going to disengage and away you go. But once you, let me disengage my hoop here. But once the machine goes back to the home setting like back to ordinary sewing and my carriage is back in the home position uh and again my my screen well then i lose all access to my embroidery screen so there's no way to use this precision marker for anything other than embroidery uh not to mention it's not a regular presser foot so you wouldn't be able to sew with that foot anyway so uh, again those kind of questions have been coming up uh, specifically with Continental M17, uh, so I thought it would be a good time to address them. Oh, very lastly, to oh, the time people have asked. I showed this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Luciano's here. Better late than never. <laughs> but again, Luciano, you can go back and review on Genome HQ, or it will be a Genome HQ YouTube uh, presentation. People have asked me, oh, a few weeks ago, you showed that fabric. I'm like, what fabric? Oh gosh, I'm always showing everything. The fabric they meant is this gorgeous Kimberly Einmo fabric. I showed it when I was at the Janome Sewing and Learning Center. Look at all the beautiful colors. Oh, the, and this is only a small sample. They sent me, this is all from Timeless 
treasures. And Kimberly Imo, you know, is Janome America's uh, national spokeswoman. And although she has recently moved to Australia, she is still going to be a part of the Janome family. Absolutely. I'm sure Janome Australia is thrilled she's there. And I would love to visit her. She invited me. Uh, whenever I'm in Australia, I can come see her and I would love to because she's just adorable. And yes, yeah, she's got this gorgeous fabric called uh, solid ish. So you'll see it's tone on tone. So this is what I love. It's the perfect blender fabric. And this is why I was showing it uh, the other week because yes, Timeless Treasures sent me in. Kimberly sent me all this gorgeous fabric. I'm going to be sharing it with all of our education team and we will be making lots of samples using this beautiful fabric. So you will see it in upcoming Janome Life blogs. You'll see it if you're joining us in Vancouver for Quilt Canada. You'll see this fabric in our booth. And yes, I had showed it a few weeks ago when I just <laughs> received that fabric. I was so excited. Uh, so again, we've had some questions about saying, what's that fabric? What's the name of that fabric line that you showed? So it's Timeless Treasures, Kimberly Imo's Solidish. And don't you love it when the salvage here, a nice big salvage. So there is a solid, ooh, let me open it up. There, solid ish. Solid ish by Kimberly Imo for timeless treasures. So you can double check with your lots of our Janome dealers uh, also carry fabric. So you can double check with your Janome dealers uh, if they have the Kimberly Imo solid ish fabric from timeless treasures. If they don't, Perhaps they could order some for you. Uh, yes, Luciano, it is beautiful fabric. And again, what I love about it, it's the perfect blenders. They're great on their own. And again, they look solid-ish from a distance, tone on tone, uh, but they're perfect blenders. And, and to me that they're um, good with every kind, like they'd be good with the 1930s reproduction. They'd be good for very modern fabric uh, when you just, you don't want anything plain, but you don't want anything too patterned. So that's what I fell in love with them. And again, you'll see lots of those uh, coming up. So, oh my gosh, as usual, whoo, I could go on and talk all day because oh, there is so much to share. And again, all of you that uh, commented and participated in our giveaways, again, thank you for all that feedback. I'm compiling again the list and I'm going to be sharing a lot of that. Uh, feedback and, and demos of, again, ruler quilting and learn more about the other machines in upcoming live presentations as well as uh, for our upcoming, um, uh, you know, Genome Life blogs and even upcoming classes. Yes, we're in the works. We're in the works. We're so close. So yes, it's all going to be soon, 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 soon. I know everyone hates that word soon. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're, we're in the works between launching this beautiful new machine, getting ready for Quilt Canada in June, uh, revamping things like, oh, the accessory catalog and, you know, yes, opening the sewing and learning center for in person as well as online. Uh, events that, yeah, there's a lot in the works, but we have lots in store for you all. So thank you so much for sticking with us. And I would definitely hope to see you all next week for another, I'll be doing magical machine mystery tour then. What will it be? I don't know. It's a mystery. So we must tune in. So thank you everyone for joining me today. It's always, a, uh, yeah, better soon than never. I agree, Luciano. Uh, and certainly COVID didn't help anything at all, but we're, we're here. We're sticking with it and it's, it's coming together. So so yes, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye.